Over my many years as a student, I've lived in quite a lot of student houses. This is the most recent one, and personally one of my favourites, probably because it's a postgraduate house rather than an undergraduate house, they tend to have a slightly better standard. You may have heard some horror stories about student accommodation, but on the whole, it's pretty fine. They may not be the best houses you'll ever see, but they certainly do the job and they're nothing to be afraid of. Some, however, do definitely live up to the stereotype. My first year of uni I lived in halls, and then after that I have lived in four different student houses. One of them stands out as the interesting year. We'll get to that. I think the main piece of advice that I can give for if you are viewing student properties for somewhere to live next year is be wary of recently repainted houses with no other work having been done. Usually a sign of covering up damp and other problems. Just throwing some paint at it so that you don't see it. So it doesn't mean there's anything wrong, but be aware if they're just saying it's been repainted and it doesn't look like any other renovation has happened, might be a reason. As I said, I have had one standout experience of student accommodation. So I'm gonna run you through everything that happened in that one year. It was my master's year and I fairly last minute decided that I was doing a master's degree. A lot of my friends had already decided that they were doing master's degrees and had found suitable accommodation for them for that year. And five of them, including my boyfriend, had got together and signed a contract, rented a place that was a six bedroom house. There were five of them, but the landlord was happy to leave one room vacant. So that seemed like the logical thing for me to do, take that room. A sensible person would go and look at the place. I didn't. <laughs> That's the first mistake. <laughs> I was working on the assumption that my friends who I trusted had viewed the place, taken photos, said it was nice. I'd seen a couple of pictures of rooms, they looked fairly standard. So I thought, yeah, they say it's great. They said it had really good new oven in it and all this kind of stuff, it looked really nice. So I will take the room. Little did they know, it wasn't their fault, but little did they know, the tenants who had been living in there since they'd viewed it in around February before moving in in September, had not looked after the place. So when we moved in, several of the bedroom doors had been kicked in, the brand new oven had been destroyed, and they were waiting on a new oven to replace it, and somehow they'd managed to completely destroy the floor to the bathroom and the ceiling of the room below had like caved in, presumably overflowed the bath or something. So great start. <laughs> now I think the easiest way to do this is to go through room by room. I think, <laughs> of all the things that developed over time. So we're gonna start with, overall for the whole house, the heating didn't work. Um, yeah, in Britain, especially in the city I was in, Swansea, it's cold, it's wet, you need heating. And students move in in September and move out in June, July. So most of the time that you are, you are in that house, it is cold, you need heating. <laughs> The heating system was very old and, as it turned out, was completely filled with sludge. This happens over time, you need to flush out a system and clean it, but basically all the radiators were full right to the top with just this brown crap. So just the very top, like maybe a few centimetres of the radiator got slightly warm and that was all we got. I will dig out a Facebook status that I made during this time describing all the clothes that I was wearing and still cold while trying to do some work. Room by room now. So we'll start on the ground floor. So bedroom number one, this was my boyfriend's room, which I also pretty much always slept in for reasons that will be made clear later. Uh, and this one was okay. We had these bay windows, which got a bit of condensation and we ended up with quite a bit of black mold along that front wall. But it was just, you know, wiped off on the surface, manageable. Bedroom number two, slightly more major problem. The gutter at the back of the house had some kind of blockage and so would overflow and all the water would just run down the wall completely soaking it. So this room, one section of the wall was just completely sodden and covered in mould of various colours. Kitchen, no ventilation, no extractor fan, nothing. So with six people living here and all of them cooking, it got really steamy and humid in there and there was no easy way to let the air out because the windows were on the other side of the room and not very big. So. It just generally was damp, things in cupboards went mouldy, wasn't good. Bathroom number one, not really used very much, didn't have a shower. So that's the thing, and as well, there was one shower for the six of us. 
so it was basically just a toilet and a bath. You couldn't really use the bath because the hot water system didn't work that well, so you couldn't get an entire like warm bath. Like there wouldn't be enough hot water for that. So just a toilet really in there, and um, a silverfish infestation. If you're not familiar with silverfish, basically little insects that like to live in damp places, notoriously hard to get rid of. And because we had so many, we had a full ecosystem in there. So there was the silverfish, and then there were earwigs and millipedes and lots of spiders. Also, there was a fair bit of black mold growing in that room too. All right, let's go up a floor. Bedroom number three. I don't think there were any major problems in this room. I don't think. Not that I can remember. Bedroom number four. Same problem as bedroom number two. That same wall with the being soaked by the gutter. So one section of wall completely soaked, covered in mold. Living room. This room, I think you can kind of see on the plan here, this section of the building is an extension. So this is all external walls around this part and the roof, because this is the top floor of the extension. That meant that since it didn't really get very warm from the heating, all these walls were very cold and you get condensation forming on them. So we had mold all over the walls and the ceiling. We had a about once a month ritual of bleaching the walls as a group and then just closing the door to the room, leaving the window open and let all the fumes leave so that we can re-enter the room. Okay, bathroom number two. This room was great. So like I said, the only shower. So I had all six of us showering in there pretty much every day. Lots of steam, all external walls, lots of condensation forming. You'd have to mop the ceiling after you had a shower because of the amount of condensation that formed. If you didn't mop the ceiling, it would form into icicles. Not kidding. <laughs> Genuinely had icicles. This room was so damp that we had all the black mold growing on it, just like in the other rooms. But also we had a full on mushroom grow out of the floor of like a gap in the lino by the toilet, a full on like this kind of big mushroom. So that's that floor done, top floor. So now we have the last two bedrooms up here. Uh, bedroom number six was my bedroom. I didn't ever sleep in that room. I just used it to have a desk to work at and to store clothes because I had water run down the wall every time it rained, like a full on like flowing like water because there was a big hole in the roof apparently. We should have been clued into this because when uh, they were being shown around and when I was signing the contract, there were lots of mentions about how the roof had recently been inspected and the roof was fine. There was no problem with the roof. The roof is fine. Big red flag if you're not asking about something and you're constantly being reassured that it's fine. Maybe they're worried that you'll notice that it's not. And it wasn't. There were a lot of wood lice in my room, I remember. Again, an insect that likes damp kind of places. Pretty big ones as well, you know, a good couple of centimetres. Monster wood lice. And the last bedroom, bedroom number five. Um, yeah, this one was definitely the best. Uh, <laughs> the window didn't fully shut, so the cold situation was made even worse. There was an awful lot of damp, probably from the leaky roof. Couldn't really tell the source, just the walls were quite damp. There was a lot of mold. And the best part, bed bugs. You don't really hear about bed bugs much these days, but um, yeah, they, they still exist. They're still a problem. They're still an absolute nightmare to get rid of. So, um, my friend who was living in this room, she ended up moving out and paying the rent for that place and another place that she was actually living in because she couldn't get out of the contract that we were in. We took photos of all the problems to document it. I deleted all of them after I moved out, kind of just wanting to put the whole experience behind me, not thinking that maybe one day it would become far enough in the past that I can laugh about it. But um, one of my friends did actually hold on to her photos and she sent some of them to me. We lived in this. <laughs> You see this one? That was a bedroom. <laughs> I, I cannot express the health hazard that this is. Like, we complained about this a lot to the letting agent. About once a week, all of us would march in there and ask what was happening to fix the problems. And we would get fobbed off with excuses. They'd say, oh yes, yeah, some the scaffolders are coming to look at the roof and they'll put up the scaffolding. It's happening next week. Never. The entire time we were there, did any work get done? Uh, the, fi the central heating did get fixed, but it was towards the end of the winter when it was less essential. I guess they did fix it. <laughs> but we ended up having an inspection from the head of the letting agency to come and see what we were complaining about. And after we had shown him around, talked him through all of the problems, 
he said, and I quote, it's not uninhabitable yet. If you think that this is inhabitable, would you like to live here? Would you like to move in and stay for a few nights? Would you like to see how much of a cough you develop in that time? Because I can't shift this cough because I'm constantly breathing in spores. There's, st there's still a little bit of anger. It's been many years, still a bit of anger. <sighs> so with hindsight, there are things that we could have done and there's recommendations I'm gonna to give to you. If you are living in an absolute hellhole of a student house, there are things you can do. If you're a student, you can go to your student union. If you show them photographs and you have all the email written documentation of the communications that you've had about this, and the, you can show that they're not doing anything, the student union will definitely have your back. If they're still not taking anything seriously, you can threaten going to the local council. In the UK, you can basically go to the council, say that, that what is happening, and they will force the landlord to deal with it. The thing that we were worried about and why we didn't do that was that we, I'm not sure how true it is, but we were under the impression that we would have to vacate the property immediately if the council got involved and said that something needed to be done about it. And we didn't have anywhere else to go. So that's why we didn't, because we didn't want to set that in motion and make things worse for ourselves by ending up being homeless. So I don't know if that is the case. I've not gone through the process, but I think with hindsight, we should have just done it, to be honest because it was awful. We paid so much money in rent on that house. Between the six of us, it was one and a half grand a month they were getting from us. But what I will say is that I have lived in plenty of other student houses and they are fine. The place I'm living in now is absolutely amazing. It's my favorite student house I've lived in. It's got disadvantages, it's got minor problems, but the best thing about it is we have a great landlord and landlady who actually care that the place is kept in a good condition and that we have a nice place to live. When we have problems, they fix them right away. And that means a lot more than the house. Having people on your side definitely matters more. So do you have a housing horror story? Do tell below. I would love to hear. Can you top it? I really want to hear a story that's more disturbing than mine. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon.